Hi, and welcome to Better Boating in Connecticut. I'm your host, Wendy Flynn, and today joining me is Kate Brown from the Deep Boating Division. And we are here to talk about the Boating Infrastructure Grant Program. We are in New London on the Thames River at Thamesport Marina, which is one of our Boating Infrastructure Grant sites. And, uh, you know, we have them throughout the, throughout the state in uh, Norwalk, New Haven, uh, up the Connecticut River. There's a couple other in Thamesport or in the Thames River, as well as in Stonington. So, Kate, um, let's start off with talking about what this Boating Infrastructure Grant Program is. Sure. Well, thanks for having me on the show, Wendy. Um, the Boating Infrastructure Program is a federally funded program, and um, we work with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, um, and we apply for a grant every year. And the purpose of that grant is to provide places for larger boats to go. Um, Connecticut has been really successful at getting boat launches for trailerable boats um, for many years. So we have a lot of really amazing spots to go uh, for the smaller boats. But Congress realized uh, after we had done a lot of that nationally that there weren't enough places for the larger boats to go um, and stay if they were traveling to a harbor that was outside of the area that they normally keep their boat. So um, the Boating Infrastructure Program was born and uh, the states are eligible to apply for funds to help uh, marine facilities add these boating infrastructure sites so that um, if you're traveling around on the coast or if you're just going from one state to another or har one harbor to another, uh, there's a place for you to go and to stay and that there will be amenities there that you need. Okay. So can you talk a little bit about where these funds come from? Are they, uh, you know, my tax, my state tax dollars at work, you know, that Congress has reallocated or what exactly, where are they from? Right. So that's a question that everybody wants answered, especially uh, now where budgets are tight for everybody. Um, these actually are not state or federal, just regular tax dollars from a general fund. This is what we call a user pay, user benefit program. So um, if you're uh, at home watching us and you're wondering um, where that money comes from, I can assure you that unless you own a boat and you're paying federal excise taxes on motorboat fuel or you're buying fishing tackle or you're importing a yacht um, internationally, um, you're not paying into this. So basically the ones who are going to benefit, the big boat owners, are the ones that are really paying into the system. All right, great. So we get this federal money comes into marinas and states, you know, the, through through us through a grant program that we provide, and then ultimately the local benefit, the local economy will benefit. You know, if a big, you know, the boats come in here, and hopefully they'll, you know, they'll get some fuel, maybe use the pump out. You know, then they'll head into town for uh, for dinner, lunch, a show. Um, what else could they come in here for? You know, maybe they need the laundry mat. Ice cream. Don't like forget the ice cream. Ice cream during the summer. It's definitely fantastic. Ice cream. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, um, what about, uh, let's talk a little bit about the history. When, you know, when this program came into Connecticut, you know, how successful it's been, anything like that. Let's, let's talk about that. What can you tell us? Well, um, the, the program started off slowly in, um, the year 2000 and that year, I believe we started off with a couple of the smaller projects that uh, were moorings in the major harbors. So we had some moorings put in in New Haven. Um, there are some moorings upriver here in the Thames River, um, just near City Pier, which is a popular place for people to visit. And then we also have some moorings in Norwalk. So we tried to space them out across the state. Um, subsequent to those projects, we put in some, we worked, we worked with the marinas and the towns um, where we have uh, one in the Pawcatuck River, um, a, a Greenhaven Marina in Stonington. There is, um, I believe there are six in the Connecticut River now. We great. just did a, a great tour last uh, fall of those. And um, let's see what else yeah the thames river thames this river, is this yeah. is the so newest 10, 10 total right 10 total 10 total yep. and then this one is a little bit under construction as you might be able to hear there's a barge <laughs> over there working so that's that noise um and we have one more in the works right in the connecticut river in middletown 
Correct. Yep. Actually, I just talked to, talked to the planner this morning and um, their construction schedule is to start in the spring of 2018. So we're hoping that by the summer of 2018, if you're cruising around in your boat on the Connecticut River, there'll be a place for you to go at um, the Harbor Park area. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of demand for additional boating, uh, boating sites there. People go to watch the fireworks. They go to... Um, use the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, there is a boat launch for smaller skulls there as well. Um, so that's a very popular area. Okay. So we talked a little bit in general, you know, in general terms of where, you know, town wise where they are, but if I were a boater and I wanted to, you know, take advantage of one of these sites, can you give us a little bit of information about how I would find that? Where, where would I go? All right, sure. It. So um, one of the things that um, we've done, and I've actually actually worked with our, our colleague in the office, Yolanda Cooley, um, who helped me to put together um, an interactive map. So if you go to the DEEP website, um, and I believe the on the screen below you, you'll see that map website. Um, we also have a QR code for that in our boater's guide. So you can either click on the QR code or type in this website and go right to the interactive map. And that will show you um, a bunch of red stars on the state of Connecticut map. And if you click, double click on those and zoom in, it'll tell you what the marina is, um, where it's located. You'll get a latitude and longitude. And it'll also pop up a screen that'll show you some photographs. It'll list the amenities um, of the marina, perhaps what kind of power is available. Um, different boats have different power requirements for electrical, um, whether or not you can get water if there's a pump out right there at the facility. Um, so, and, and also area attractions, restaurants, um, whether or not there are uh, art venues, a casino, um, you know, transportation, all the kinds of things that, you know, a boater would want to use when they come into the shore. So we tried to make that as, as inclusive as possible. And then of course, uh, the website for the marine facility would also be on there. So you can click through to there. Great, so thank you. So we're gonna take a little bit of a break right now. Um, so enjoy this PSA and we'll be back in just a few minutes. We love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's exciting. Esto es vida. Why do I have to wear a life jacket? We wear it to be safe. I've got mine on. We're teaching our kids about safe boating. Cogí un pescado así de grande. <laughs> <laughs> we all love this life. Wear it and love the life. This message brought to you by the National Safe Boating Council. Hi, and welcome back. We are here in at Thamesport Marina in New London, and we're talking, Kate, Kate Brown and I are talking about um, the Boating Infrastructure Grant Program, so thank you for joining us. So, Kate, uh, prior to the break, we talked a little bit about the Boating Infrastructure Grant Program in general, what uh, boaters will need to do, but can we, let's switch gears to what the facility will need to do, whether it's a marina or a town or a boatyard or, you know, anybody that is eligible to come in. Um, what do they have to consider when applying for this grant? Okay, well, they have to consider... Um, First of all, whether or not the marine facility, uh, whether it's, as you said, a town, a marina, a boatyard, um, even a state agency that may have waterfront property, um, can they uh, support um, larger boats? Uh, we're looking for boats that are 26 feet and larger in general. So one of the considerations is how deep is the water at low tide? Can you get in there um, and have at least six feet at low tide for these larger boats? Because they do need to have enough water um, to come in safely. Um, so that's one consideration. The other thing is that the federal rule requires, since these are larger boats and most of them have heads or um, bathrooms on board the boats, um, is that a pump out facility be available either at the marine facility or within two miles at another facility. And that doesn't include the mobile pump out vessels that may be um, available in the area. It needs to be a stationary facility that's pretty much available to them whenever they need it. Um, so those are two considerations that are really important. Okay. Um, so some other things that uh, the facility would need to um, consider is maybe that it would now be open to not just their seasonal patrons, but you know, open to the public, anyone can kind of drive on in and 
you know, tie up if they can? Is that the way it works? Right. Well, um, that's true. It has to be open to the general boating public. So what we want to make sure is that um, these facilities are really reserved for the transient boaters. They're not um, ever rented as a seasonal slip um, because they are provided for this very purpose of providing transient um, access. So um, that's, that's really important that it be available to the public. The other thing that's really um, critical is that they have some sort of online reservation system uh, for the boater to make a reservation. Uh, many marinas are using online systems such as DACWA or have their own website where you can contact the marina and make a reservation. So if you're planning for your vacation, you can say, I, you know, I really wanna be there uh, for 4th of July weekend so I can see the fantastic fireworks display in the Thames River where we are. Um, so that's a really important consideration. So um, if we, you know, we as the deep, as deep, uh, provide this, uh, this grant to any marinas or, you know, whoever's eligible, um, do, do they just get to build it? You know, do they have to talk to the town? Do they, you know, do they have to talk to the Army Corps of Engineers? You know, who do they have to talk to to actually construct this? Well, um, they're actually, because we're talking about um, things that are happening in the water on the coast, um, there are permits that are required that they need to get. Um, there are state and federal permits and there may be local building permits for the area that transitions from the water uh, to the land. Um, there are handicapped accessibility um, requirements. Uh, the, f the facility really should be fully accessible um, to all people, regardless of their abilities. Um, and you know, we need to make sure that, for instance, the ramps are wide enough. So if someone is using a walker or wheelchair, um, that they can access the dock, um, that they can safely transition from the ramp to the dock and then to their vessel. Um, so that's that's really important um, to make it really fair and open for everyone. Okay. And uh, are there any other guarantees that the facility would need to uh, ensure to make sure this you know won't last more than mm -hmm. this? I mean, this looks like it's going to be built more than you know two five years. You know, do they have to pay attention to any of that? And and what happens if you know if the marina gets sold? You know, what what happens with that? Right. So there there are two other considerations, and these are actually in the federal rule. Um, that comes to us uh, when the state applies for the funds and then when we um, enter into a contract with the marine facility. And that is uh, that they have to identify, um, their engineer has to identify and sign, on, sign and seal a plan that identifies the useful life of each component of the structure. So for instance, this concrete dock may last 50 years. Um, so we want to know exactly how long each component is going to last. Um, those ultralight aluminum ramps that you see behind us, um, those will last for quite a long time as well. And what we want to do is have a record of that so that the federal investment is protected. So not only is the useful life identified in the grant, but um, it is filed on the land record. So it actually is attached to the deed in the municipality where the facility is. So that if this marina decided to sell the property to a different marina, those federal assets would be protected and the transient boaters would continue to be able to utilize the site even though it's a different owner because the same rules would apply. Okay, great, thank you. And so who would be eligible to apply for this grant? Um, any marina in the state of Connecticut can certainly contact us and um, apply for this grant. Uh, a marina, a boatyard, um, a state agency, a town, a nonprofit organization. Um, pretty much if you have waterfront facilities that have, you know, six feet of water at low tide and you have a pump out within two miles or you're considering putting one in because um, we can help you with a different grant for that, um, you should contact us and um, talk to us in advance. Um, I've found that the projects where people come to us and get technical assistance early on tend to be more successful because we can help um, steer people in the right direction, make sure they're answering the right questions, and make sure that they're covering all of these bases. All right, great. So um, we, we're going to take another break in a few minutes, but before we do that, uh, I just want to take a little bit of a look around this great facility that we're at. It is, it is still in construction, um, but you know, the the floats are in, it's looking great, and by next season it'll be up and running. So 
And when we come back, we'll be at another facility, another boating infrastructure grant facility. And uh, it also has a pump out there and it, it's, that one's already constructed. So stay tuned and we'll be back soon. This summer, law enforcement agencies across the country are participating in Operation Dry Water and looking for impaired drivers. Whether you are on the water or on land, you'll be going nowhere fast if you choose to operate a vessel or a vehicle while impaired. Drunk boating becomes drunk driving, and law enforcement officers will be on the lookout for those who choose to operate under the influence. Alcohol use is the number one factor in recreational boater deaths. Be smart, be safe, and, and never boat, boat under, under the influence. Be advised, I'll be arresting an impaired boater and requesting assistance. 10-4, I'll meet you at the boat ramp. Hi, and welcome back to Better Boating in Connecticut. We have switched locations to a big facility in Old Saybrook. We are currently at Saybrook Point Marina. And we're on the Connecticut River. And let's see, what does this facility have? So this is a boating infrastructure grant uh, facility as well as a Clean Vessel Act facility. So we'll get to the Clean Vessel Act part in a few minutes. But um, I just wanted to you know, show what this facility has uh, to offer. But before we get, hop into that, I just wanted to go back to one of the, uh, the things that we forgot to mention earlier. And that is that the big program is uh, all of the eligible um, projects um within you know within whatever the the facility mm -hmm. is is going to be building it's only up for up to 75 percent right is that right right so that right? yeah all the eligible components such as docks moorings um improved bathroom facilities um any uh, upland amenities that a boater may um be interested in uh such as laundry facilities um the grant can match up to 75 percent of the cost of that um and some for some of the larger facilities usually the split is closer to 50 50. Okay, that's great. So right here, Kate, why don't you just go through and talk a little bit about what this marina has to offer, um, you know, that's a little bit different than than the Thamesport Marina. Okay, well, um, they're, they're similar in size. Um, this marina has um, an inn, a spa, um, it has uh, multiple restaurants. They offer a courtesy shuttle for um, the transient boaters that may come in um, to utilize the facility. And they also offer um, bikes so you can take your family out for a bike ride downtown. So that's kind of cool and, and innovative. And being here in Old Saybrook, there's quite a lot to do in town. Um, in front of us, um, there are four transient slips. Um, and these are an interesting configuration. We have a floating concrete dock here, which um, is currently winterized uh, with, the, with the ramp um, being set down on the float for now for, for winter storage. Uh, but the pilings separate the vessels um, and the vessels come in stern to, to the concrete float. Um, and they tie up to these really cool uh, piling gar guards that float up and down. And because you can see behind us, we're at the mouth of the Connecticut River, um, we get significant ice flows here. So these piling guards actually are really great innovation. Um, they, they slide up and down um, to keep uh, the pilings protected from ice. So depending on the marina, uh, depending on its location, depending on the kinds of vessels that are gonna come here, they're each de designed um, slightly differently. Okay, great. Yeah, this, I mean, this this facility looks just as, you know, fantastic as the Thamesport one. It was, you know, that one, a little bit of construction still going on, but as soon as that's done, I can, can see that these are very uh, great looking, great looking facilities that, you know, people will definitely take advantage of. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about pump outs. So right. that's one of the key components for the boating infrastructure grant pro, uh, program that, you know, a pump out needs to be within a few miles Absolutely. of the facility. This one has one right on site, similar to Thamesport. Thamesport had a marina or a pump out as well. So let's talk about, you know, if we, if these are required to be at these or nearby these 
big facilities, then they must have, you know, the funding, right? They're, the funding is part of, you know, the Fish and Wildlife Service too. Can you can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so the same um, trust fund, uh, the, the Sport Fish Restoration Trust Fund, um, which is uh, administered through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, also funds the Clean Vessel Act program. And again, 75% of the project can be funded through the grant, so up to 75%. And um, the pump out facilities help to keep the water clean by removing the waste from recreational boats from their holding tanks. Um, and disposing of them properly, either to a holding tank that is later pumped out or directly to a sanitary sewer system. And here on the dock, we have um, the pump for the pump out. You can see the hose is coiled here, and we have um, several uh, pump out stations down this long dock so that um, the, can, the boaters can basically, the transient boaters that, that come in here can pull in. They don't even have to move their boat. They can fuel, they can get electricity, they can get water, and they can pump out without ever even moving their vessel. And in Connecticut, all pump outs are free to recreational boaters through this program. And we did that in cooperation with the marinas to ensure that there was absolutely no barrier whatsoever for boaters to do the right thing, dispose of their sanitary waste in an appropriate way to keep the water clean because it helps all of us and let's face it, nobody wants to fish or swim in that. Right. So how many pump outs do you think are, or I'm sure you know, how many pump outs are there throughout Connecticut? So there are approximately a hundred stationary or portable pump outs at marine facilities such as this. And then we have 24 pump out boats. Um, there are also 21 dump stations. So for the smaller boats that have maybe more of a porta potty type of thing on board, they can dump that when they come into a marina. Um, or they, they can use a wand that actually will take it out of their vessel for them. Um, so we have actually quite a few and they're statewide um, on the coast, up our coastal rivers. And also we have one pump out boat and, and stationary facility in Kandawa Lake. So we've done a lot to really kind of improve water quality in Connecticut. And um, so something that we didn't i don't think that we mentioned it in the earlier segment but i just wanted to say that so the boating infrastructure grant projects they have to be on navigable water so that's so you can get it you know ultimately you can get from one of our locations to you know somewhere in florida let's say it's a big distance but you know somewhere down in florida where right. you know a pump out can be inland you mentioned the candlewood lake boat Right. right. So the boating infrastructure grants, as I as I mentioned, were really intended for boats that are either transiting um, the the shoreline, in, in the case of Connecticut, the Eastern Seaboard, um, or they're going maybe from one harbor, say they're going from New Haven to New London. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're basically utilizing. Um, a slip or a mooring that's not in their port of origin. Um, so they need to be connected facilities. Um, so yeah, typically they're the navigable waterways uh, of Long Island Sound and then going up into the major tidal rivers such as this one in Connecticut. Right. So and we can find all of the um, the big facilities on the the uh, the 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 directory, that website that you directed us to before. Correct. Now, do you want to talk a little bit about the pump out directory that we have as well so that people can try to locate the nearest pump out if they need one? Sure. So we have um, a similar pump out facility um, map that will show you, you can zoom in on it and it'll show the little pump out icon on the map. And when you look at the icons, the ones that are black and white, are stationary or marine land-based facilities, whereas the ones that are red are pump-out boats. So you can locate those on the map, depending on where you are in the state, and then you can click on the icon and information about how to hail the pump-out boat or how to call the marine facility will come up on your screen. It will tell you uh, their hours of operation. It will tell you the VHF frequency where you can contact the marine facility or boat. Um, it may provide a phone number uh, if they have a mobile cell phone uh, on the pump out vessel and it also will give you a link to their website if there is one and an opportunity to make online reservations if that's offered by the facility. So it makes it incredibly convenient for the boaters. Um, this map can be located on our 
deep website. And I believe we're showing that on the screen for all of our viewers so that you can check that out. Also, if you go to the um, Connecticut Boaters Guide, there is a QR code that you can click on that will give you easy access to the map as well. So it's pretty similar to what we did with boating infrastructure, only just more tailored to the pump outs themselves. So besides the directory that will direct you to either the pump out facility or the boating infrastructure grant facility, we also advertise in several magazines um, and printed materials throughout the state or region, as well as our social media, you know, on if there's a, a problem or a new facility that opens up, you know, we put it out on our Facebook or social media or, or Twitter. And, you know, we try to get the word out as, as best we can in, in a different, uh, a wide variety of, of ways, you know, just to let everybody know about the, these amazing uh, facilities that we have. So, Kate, is there anything else that you would like to add? before we say our goodbyes. Um, just that this, uh, this facility and the one we saw earlier this morning are to only two of the great facilities that we have statewide. We have multiple other facilities going up this river. We have more out to the west. We have more to the east and, and more up the Thames River as well. So um, please go to the website, check out the maps to find your pump outs, to find the uh, boating infrastructure facilities. We've worked really hard with our partners, our marina partners, our boating partners, our advertising partners, and um, particularly our U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service partners that uh, provide the funding for a lot of these structures and to bring it back to our boaters here in Connecticut. So um, I want to thank everybody for making the partnership so strong and to make Connecticut um, a seriously fun place to go boating. Absolutely. So thank you all for joining us. And remember, boating is serious fun.